What it do, J. Crew? It's your girl Jasmine. I'm back with another video. I'm super excited about today's video. So I'll be talking about graduate school, specifically PhD programs, and how you can get a PhD degree completely free while getting paid. So if this is something you're interested in, make sure you stay tuned. Guys, before we get into the video, I want to firstly say thank you all for those who decided to join the J Crew. I'm very excited that you're here, and if this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. My name is Jasmine. Hopefully you know that by now. First things first, sorry y'all, it's been a few weeks. I recently just started a small online business. So if you're interested, make sure you go down below to check it out. So I make decorative trays that are completely handmade and customized. Anyways, back to today's video. So video, this will be part of a bigger series where I talk about grad school, the PhD program, and the process of getting to the PhD program. So there are a few reasons why I wanted to make these type of videos. The first reason is because there is a lack of resources for minorities, women, first generation students, especially when it comes to PhD programs. And throughout my course of applying for programs and the whole entire process, I've given a lot of resources that I feel would be maybe valuable and helpful to someone out there. So I definitely want to put that out there. And before we get started, huge disclaimer, again, I'm not like a PhD guru or anything. I am just about to start a PhD program, so I have not started yet, but the whole process in preparing for undergrad and the whole application, personal statements, letter of recs, all that stuff I've been through basically two years of. So um, other than that, I can't really speak much more about the actual PhD experience yet, but stay tuned for that. I did apply to eight PhD programs this round and I got accepted to or interviewed at um, four of those programs. I decided I would be going to University of Michigan in the fall, one of the best programs in my which is psychology. So I definitely wanted to share that. The reason I wanted to start with the funding instead of any other part is because I always had this notion, I don't even know where it came from, but I always just had this idea that getting a PhD would be so expensive because you hear about doctors, like medical doctors and how they have hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. I always just thought getting a PhD would be just as expensive and I was like, not me i'm not about to go in debt for no more schooling than i have to but this is the point of this video this is the good part that phds are different than med school and other pharmacy schools and things like that phd uh, programs are completely different and they're funded in a different way and it is possible to get them for free that is why i started with funding and instead of the other parts because i feel like for someone who has no idea anything about PhDs, if they know that, oh, this is something that could be paid for, this could be free, then it might be like, okay, so this is a route I could take, well, let's go from there. We're gonna go back to the basics and kind of, I'm gonna explain to you the different types of degrees, just a summary of them so you understand the difference between um, masters and PhDs like that. So after graduate high school is, what is considered higher ed. So then you have your two years, which is your AA, and then you have your four years, which is your bachelor's um, and whatever degree. And then after your four years of undergrad, getting your bachelor's, then you could get your master's. So master's are usually about two, two and a half years long. And um, in sum, this is not a holistic explanation of master's, but basically with your master's, it's kind of preparing you to go right into the workforce. So. For example, in psychology, if I get a master's in mental health counseling, then I could become a counselor. Once I graduate, I learn all the tools to just be a counselor and do counseling things. And then um, after that, after your master's, then you have your PhDs. So PhDs um, are usually five to five and a half years long, depending on your program and how your program is ran. So the first two years are your coursework, which is basically everything you've learned in your master's program. So most PhD programs, you graduate or get your master's degree along the way. So after your first two years, which is very similar to your master's, the basics on whatever field you're in, after that two years is that time where you're learning to become an expert in a field. This is the part that really makes you a doctor. Um, 
Again, medical doctor, um, doctors of philosophy, it depends on what program you're in, but for me, doctors of philosophy. So that time after earning your master's is, again, when you become specialized, when you become an expert in the field, which also requires a lot of research. And research does occur at other stages, maybe in your master's and undergrad, but not as heavy as in your PhD program. And while you're in a PhD program, this is when you are training, to become a doctor so you you have a smaller niche than you would so in your master's maybe you're a mental health counselor but in your PhD program maybe you're more specialized um, in understanding some specific phenomenons or like a certain area that you work with so for example if you uh, if your research and your work focuses on specifically women and childhood trauma so that's what your niche would be so in some basically that's what a PhD program is and how that differs all right so now that we got that out of the way on to the moolah part so fundings for PhDs there are four main ways of uh, you getting funded for this program so the first way which is the most typical is a fully funded packet so once you apply and you get accepted they usually let you know this is your funding packet this is what you'll get this is what it comes with so in a fully funded packet what it usually comes with is your classes being paid for either through a waiver or um some other way your classes are paid for and then usually what's attached is a ta ship or a ga ship which means you are a teaching assistant or a graduate assistant usually in the department or maybe another department where you are a ta or you're working specifically with a professor with certain classes it depends on how it works but what they're called is ta ships and ga ships you know if you're an undergrad now you know you have tas and things like that that help the professor in their certain classes so fully funded means your classes are covered and you get a TA ship and oftentimes the classes being covered is because you're a TA and you work at university so you usually get free credits but too much detail so fully funded your classes are covered you get a job you get paid that way usually TA ships and JA ships um, depends on the program don't usually pay that much but it is a payment and you don't have to pay for your classes so that is what fully funded means and then what you have next is the partial funding. So partial funding is, it depends, again, everything depends on how the program works. So partial funding would be either they pay for some of your classes, they pay a certain amount of credits for you, um, but not all your classes. Um, but sometimes with partial funding, they still offer you TA ship or GA ship. Um, it just depends on what they have available. So partial funding means you have to pay something out of pocket. Where it's full, you don't pay for anything and you get the TA ship or GA ship. Partial, you have to pay for something. It just depends on what it would be and how much partial funding would be in your program. And then you have no funding, which these are programs, the rule of thumb is you kind of want to avoid programs that don't provide you any funding um, because it is a five, five and a half year commitment and um, grad classes are very expensive. So you have to pay for everything out of pocket. It may or may not be hard for you, but um, it's something that it just depends on what, what you want to do, but it's not exactly that typical. That might happen if they really want you, but they have no more spots or whatever the situation may be, no funding. And the fourth one, which is the best one to me, I'm working towards this, so is the fellowship. So what a fellowship is, is basically what you call a scholarship, but in grad school they usually call it fellowship. So how you can get fellowships is either you apply through the government, through the school, through a professional association, um, and oftentimes it is for a research project. So for example, if I, for, for example, the National Science Foundation has really big, really great fellowships. So for that process, it's like I would write a proposal for a study, like this is what I wanna do. And then you, you propose it and they're like, oh, this is a great study. So here you go, here's your fellowship. So with that fellowship, you get everything covered, but you don't have to be a TA. So basically it substitutes your um, 
paychecks from TA ship slash GA ship, which is really great because it's usually more than you TA ship and GA ship. So it's it's a nice sum of money. So fellowships can be really competitive to um, apply for and get, but it is definitely possible. And after you start grad school, there's always plenty of ways and opportunities for you to get a fellowship depending on your proposal and depending on sometimes you don't even have to have a proposal if your school has like presidential or merit fellowship so the great thing is especially if you're a woman a minority or first generation student because there is a lack of representation in those three specific groups of phd holders in this country the government schools and different associations have worked really hard to increase those numbers so which means they kind of try their best to provide different resources and opportunities for those three groups to apply for grad school and PhD programs specifically and to gain the experience that they need so that they can be more prepared or they could just get there. So what what these can be is application waivers. Applications for PhD programs can be very expensive. So most of the time if you email a school, they can give you some type of waiver which would save you a lot because some applications are like 30 bucks but other ones may be like 150 which I think is insane for schools but those opportunities are available. GRE waivers, um, which GRE tests are, we'll get there another time, but GRE tests can be very expensive, very hard to study for. Um, and other programs may offer visit days or recruitment weekends where you apply, they, their, their goal is to recruit minorities or women or first generation students, whatever it may be, but this gives you an opportunity to kind of go to the campus where they, they pay for everything and you visit and see the environment and if it's something that you think would be a good fit which is an amazing opportunity because then you get a first look at the program and to talk to potential professors and mentors and things like that that will get you prepared for a phd program so those are just a very few opportunities that are more available and like i said earlier the other great thing is a lot of PhD programs accept with full funding. And this is not everyone, by not by all means, is not every single program, but most programs do offer full funding or TA ship, GA ship opportunities, just depend. Anyway, so that is the money part. The great thing is there is money out there. You can apply and there are other resources that will help you be more prepared. So it is very possible for you to get a PhD completely free while getting paid. And I am really hope that this video has so far done a little bit of that to help you understand that process a little bit more. But just to touch on a few other things that would, I guess, make kind of sense in this video. So how do you even get a PhD? Like how do you even get there? Now you know you can get money, where do I, how do I get started? So the first and most important thing which may be obvious, but is to figure out what you want to do. You shouldn't get a PhD just because like, oh, it's free, I could do it, why not? It is something that is very hard. I may make it sound like, oh, it's a very smooth ride. It's not, it, it's a very hard and long process. So you have to figure out what it is that you want to do and if it's something that you enjoy doing and also figuring out if it is the best option for what it is that you want to do. Is it better to get a master's or do you need a PhD or will a PhD give you more leverage in your field, um, give you more influence, more opportunities, it just depends. That is something that um, a lot of people learn while they're in their PhD program is that like, oh, I could have whatever it is I want to do, I could just get a master's for. So those are two things that you should definitely think about and kind of have an idea of before you begin the PhD process. So that is my very, very short summary of funding and PhD programs and just a few ideas, a few things for you to think about when it comes to PhD programs. Again, by all means, this is not holistic. I just wanted to let people know that it's possible to get a PhD funded and paid for. Everything I say, take it with a grain of salt. It could be different for whatever it is that you do at your school, your program, even different programs within the same field of psychology. It's very different in funding and availability, but generally it's somewhat similar. But also I really apologize if I talk super fast. I tend to do that, especially when I get excited. But I'm hoping that this video provided you guys with a little bit of insight. Of course, if you have any other questions, you could drop them down below. If there is anything specific that you want to know about the PhD program, also drop them down below and I'll make sure I touch on those topics in other videos. 
make sure you drop a like a comment a subscribe a share share with all your friends maybe they'll be interested in learning about this as well and thank you for watching as always make sure you turn a little bell on so you can see all the other videos i post in the future i'm sorry i talk with my hands so much but anyways so that is all i have for you today so i'll catch y'all next time on life with chat